I am going to kind of demo how I make my clarinet content and stuff. So pretty much I'm also going to turn this into a YouTube video just as a resource for people that want to learn how to do this kind of thing. Because honestly, when I was trying to get started making this content, I didn't know where to start or anything like that. I knew where to find music, but for me, like the hardest part was like figuring out how to use the programs and which programs to get. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about, or a lot of bit about all of that. So I'm really excited to talk about this because I literally spend my free time doing this. Please like take whatever you want from this. I am gonna talk a little bit about equipment. Obviously need a computer, laptop, anything that will download software. Preferably not a phone, but it probably could be done on the phone, but I feel like it would be super, super hard. So when you need a computer, microphone. Honestly, I've heard a lot of people make really good recordings just using their cell phone, like their smartphone, because smartphones have come a long way with mic microphone quality. So I feel like just a phone is fine as long as you have a way to like upload recordings from your phone to your PC or your computer. Whenever I record my videos on my phone, I always have the settings to like the highest resolution settings as I can get it without losing too much quality when I'm doing all the exporting later. So something to record video with, some type of camera, smartphone is perfectly fine. I also have this like phone stand that I use to hold my phone while I'm recording because I don't like having the upshot of my chin like my three chins that bunch up while I'm playing. So at least with like a little phone stand, at least it can like angle downward just a little bit. Um, so this is one that I have. It technically is electronic and you could like recharge it and have it track where you are and follow you, but I don't really use it for that. I literally just use it to hold my phone. So th this was a Christmas gift that was like, I think maybe 20 bucks or less. In terms of microphone, condensed mics are typically better for instruments, um, at least wind instruments. I'm not so sure about other types, but I think overall condensed mics are better. I'm not a mic geek. I did a lot of research before picking the one that I did. Um, it's on my storefront on my throne. I found it on Amazon again. It comes with the boom arm. Um, the pop filter, the wind filter, um, a little stabilizing stand. And I can kind of like pull it into frame. That's what it looks like. This was $50 on Amazon. It's insane like how much better that microphone is than my Shure mic, which is like a $200 plus dollar microphone. It's out of stock. No! I will say, as long as it says condenser mic, um, there's other ones that are around the same price range and come with all the like bells and whistles. So that's honestly it for equipment. I'm not a PC geek. Do your own research if you want to get fancy with like the PC stuff. I did just fine with the a gaming, quote unquote, gaming laptop, an Asus laptop that I had years ago. I did recordings on there and it and it did the job just slower than my PC right now. Okay, so that's it for equipment. All right, so the first piece of software that I use is called Audacity. So Audacity is literally free. You can go to Google, type in Audacity. The other piece of software I use is um, MuseScore. So MuseScore, I use this to do my sheet music. So if you go to MuseScore.com, you can find so much sheet music up here. Wind Waker. If I just type in Wind Waker, it'll bring up all this music. I pay for MuseScore Pro because I can just download everything, all the files, like painlessly edit, rearrange, all of that. Um, it's like 10 bucks a month, which for me, it's very useful. And I deduct it uh, on my taxes every year because it is an expense. I usually try to find piano scores first um, and then I'll go from there if I'm looking for a different vibe depending on the song. You can preview it to hear what it sounds like. 
that's actually a pretty good arrangement of Dragon Roost Island. So I like that one. Also, like if you want a specific instrument, you can go down here on the left side with the filters. Guitar, like if I just picked regular guitar. Um, and then where's the solo? Solo, click solo on the left. It'll show you all the guitar things for Wind Waker. And then you could just go from there. I could play them by ear, but I need the accompaniment too, which is why why I love MuseScore. So I've already downloaded the songs that you guys voted for in the polls on all across all social media. Um, Sanctuary won by a landslide, which I was like secretly hoping y'all wouldn't pick because that is the one song on MuseScore that I could find the least scores on. But I found some. I still found some. Sanctuary. I'm going to just pick one. So for this portion of stream, we're going to focus on the sheet music. Um, and we're going to work on that. Just I'm going to work on it like I normally do on a normal night. Okay. I'm going to play this um, arrangement just to see what it sounds like. DMCA, don't come for me, please, and thank you. I'm back. Welcome back, Kavi. So this is just piano, which we can work with because most of the melody is in one hand. Okay, now I'm going to open the other one just to see what that one sounds like and compare. So I'm going to play this and just see what it sounds like. Oh, wait. It didn't play all of... There we go. That's the only thing with Muse Score 4 that I'm not in love with. Sometimes, if you click on a certain note, it doesn't play all the parts when you click the playback. This one has a little, has more like colors. If you've been in the music world, a lot of people describe certain sounds as colors. Um, and almost all of my professors described color with sound. So this one has like more colors. But so this one, I think literally just ends there that's the only reason i'm like mm, probably not this one because this arrangement doesn't have as much music it's literally 20 seconds long so i'm probably gonna use the other one uh and now we get to the fun part which is rearranging <laughs> rearranging the music and adding in clarinet um for my purpose uh let's see in muse score if you if you're using muse score four if you want to add an instrument um, it should already be pre-clicked when you open a score that you're about to work on. But um, if it doesn't bring you to this page and you start a new score um, and it has you at palettes, then you click instruments at the top left, click add, and then go from there. So like your section of instrument for me, I'm a woodwind. I play clarinet and then you click the arrow after clicking your instrument and then just for me, in my brain, I have to see the soloists on the top line. So you can reorder like how it shows up on the score. So if you want piano on the top or the bottom compared to whatever instrument you add, you can rearrange that here. And I think you, can, you can't you can click and drag, actually. So you have to click on the instrument you want to move and then click the arrows on the sides to like move them up and down. So I think I at this point... Um, I usually listen to the score a few times and then figure out how much of it I want to paste over. But for the sake of this, I kind of have a general idea how much I want to do. So I'm probably going to do, um, how long is this? How many pages? Oh, there's the speed change. I'll probably do all of it. Um, okay. So there are shortcuts that you can do to kind of save yourself some time to select a whole line. So if you've never used MuseScore before, highly recommend learning the shortcuts, um, but pretty much you shift and click. So click where you want to start cop or selecting and then click and drag on the page. Um, shift and then click to the end of the selection you want to copy. So from here, it's like the same in a Word document. You just hit control C for copy, um, paste it in the clarinets. And then from there, I figure out, are there any notes that are too high for me to play um, right now? And also, are there any chords that I physically can't play 
well could but wouldn't play very well on just my single instrument so i have to like go through and fix so i'm gonna listen to it real quick the midi's not that good for clarinet a little bit louder so i'm gonna click palettes okay so i'm gonna just change the dynamics for the low part of the piano so dynamics and stuff to edit music are over here dynamics are just how loud or soft they sound and they're in order from softest to loudest up until you get all this sf and z part stuff where do i search for scores so you go to musescore.com you can go to google and type in musescore and it should be like the first thing. I'm deleting that. I don't like that in the clarinet. I'm gonna make that a whole note so it lasts the whole measure. That sounds better. Okay, I feel like that doesn't need to be there either. That can linger a little bit. I'm gonna add a dot. Want to like grow the skill of putting in notes into MuseScore. I think it is good to learn that. You can find a bunch of YouTube tutorials on that part at least on like how to enter note in in MuseScore. So I'm happy with how that sounds. The next thing I need to do is actually export the audio. So I'm gonna click mixer. I think I did it from here. No, actually no, I did it in the file. So Mixer here, you can kind of listen to what it will sound like without certain instruments. So if you click Mixer at the top and then it shows you all the instruments that you have in your score, you can click M for mute. And I think S is solo. You, you can mute pretty much any instrument you want and then just play and listen to what it will sound like. From here, I'm going to click File. And I'm going to export the audio for just the piano. So I'm going to click the parts. So this is where I have to focus. The parts that I want to export. I only want the piano since that's the only other instrument. I'm not going to click clarinet because I'm going to record the clarinet part. And then in settings, I'm going to put um, each part to separate file. That doesn't really matter because I'm only doing a one. But if I had other instruments, so if I had like drums, piano, something else, I'd click all the ones that are accompanying the instrument. And I'd probably put it in all parts combined in the one file so it doesn't fill up my PC so much. But sometimes I do each part if I want to edit how loud each instrument is. So... Just keep that in mind if you're going to edit the audio in Audacity. From here, I'm going to pick WAV file because those are higher quality, I think, compared to MP3. I always use WAV. And then sample rate, I just leave it as the default. Open destination folder on export so I can pick where that goes. So for this, I have a folder um, on my PC, clarinet videos, new stuff. <laughs> it's, it's very, I've got a system going here. So I'm going to just call it piano. Also, if anyone has a question... Please feel free to ask. Shout outs to Noli Ness. Go follow Noli because honestly, Noli inspired me to share my process. So thank you. So now I can go to this part. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of steps involved, guys. I'm so sorry if like some of y'all are falling asleep. It's fine. Okay. So I have a temp. I've already made my template. I use this all the time when I start new files in audacity from here the first thing i do is make a click track so that i can stay in time with the recordings i'm going to click my sheet music and the majority of the music is at the speed so you're going to find the number right here at the top um, of the sheet music and you are going to put that number in audacity and make a click track so how i make click tracks is I will go to generate rhythm track and then type in the number that was at the top of my sheet music. So 105, um, the music is in four. It's in four, four time. That's the top number. And I'm going to do roughly, I try to pick how much music I'm actually going to play and then add at least four measures for like, counting, breathing, coming in, and then lining it up with the other audio. 
So I'm going to put about 45 measures just to be on the safe side um, because the recordings are going to be in time. So if I'm out of time and the recordings are in time, it's going to be very noticeable. Um, so now I can import this. I can literally just drag and drop it. And then I try to line that up with the click, but the click track's already like set in place. The piano is going to start at the same time naturally. And I just play it to verify that it's in time. I love Audacity so much when it comes to like zooming in and zooming out. You just hit control and then scroll. I've got my mixes now. Now I'm ready to record on my clarinet. <laughs> so we've like found the music we wanted. I downloaded it on musescore.com. I rearranged the music. I exported the audio and I exported the PDFs. Now I go in Audacity, make the click tracks, and then import the audio from MuseScore. This part might be where some people will choose their music and practice it. I, I'm not gonna lie, I really don't practice my music that much. I play it for maybe a day. Some music I do have to practice. Um, for example, the freaking Hyrule market theme is actually harder <laughs> than it sounds. Um, so that one's giving me trouble right now. I'm not gonna play that, uh, but these songs are a little easier, so I probably won't have to practice it that much. I will probably play through it a couple times with the other instruments just to make sure everything's sounding right. I keep the music open in one part of my screen. This is the beauty of having two monitors. I usually do this over a couple monitors. So I normally have Audacity on my left monitor and my music on my right monitor. In Audacity, I need to level my audio. So click on the microphone, click start monitoring. For direct audio, you wanna click host MME to make sure it picks up your mics. And then you're gonna go to recording device and then pick the microphone that you prefer. And also what we're looking for is where this blue line, I try not to let it get above negative six, honestly. Okay, so the blue line tells you the highest place that it went to, which was right below six, until I started leaning into the mic. I'm gonna record a little bit, and then I'm gonna record on the condensed mic. I'm gonna record and see what happens. I usually make mistakes on my first few takes, so I try to get up to three good takes. there because I did mess up one rhythm. Um, I also want to hear how it's sounding and make sure I'm not sharp. Oh, I'm actually in tune. sounded really good Mahal thanks there are a couple things I messed up one note for sure and I'm not sweating it because I know I can go back and fix it um and just re-record that one little section and just kind of splice it in so generally I'll take the clarinet track go to effects volume and then amplify and I'll take it down to about minus eight do I compress next? <laughs> no, actually I do noise remove. In case there's any background noise that I don't want, I'll go to effect, noise removal, noise reduction, and then you click noise profile or get noise profile. And then you go through those buttons again, and then you click okay. This is the setting I like where the noise reduction is eight decibels, sensitivity six and a half, and frequency smoothing for bands is eight. And then I compress the audio. So I click compressor click apply. I click reverb. These are the settings I use. You can look at my screen for all the other ones. And then I hit apply. And then it adds reverb. So now it sounds like this. So it sounds like I'm in a bigger room. There you go. I feel like that shows it off a little more, like the difference in the editing. So those are the four things I do is literally volume, take it down to negative 8 to 10 decibels, 
Then I remove the background noise with noise reduction. Then I compress the audio and then I click reverb and add the reverb in. So those are the four things I do with my audio. With the pre-recorded midis, you can't really do too much. You can kind of compress it, but because it's electronically made, the most I do is I change the amplify settings to about negative 12. So I'm looking at new peak amplitude. So that's the number that I'm looking for generally. Um, and I might take this a little bit higher than that because the piano is kind of quiet. So I'll do minus 10 and then I'll click reverb and add the same exact reverb to the accompaniment just so it sounds like it's in the same space. And it sounds like the piano's slightly ahead, so I'm just gonna take this and scoot it up just a little bit. This is what works for me for just like my stuff. Um, this obviously isn't like a, you've got to do it this way to make it like the best ever, but this is what works for me and the programs that I currently have. So I'm mostly doing this just to kind of share what I've, what works for me the best in terms of the content creation stuff, just because one, I've done it so many times that I can do it like this part, the audio editing, like super fast. So I'm really happy with where this audio is right now. So I'm just going to save one more time. Um, what you can't see right now is me opening Premiere Pro. So I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to call this KH Sanctuary and then create. This is the piano. This looks like the piano. This looks like the clarinet. Yep, okay. So I don't need the piano audio. Okay, so I got my video. I just need to import clips from Sanctuary that I got. Um, so I use OBS to record my clips on YouTube. I got my, <laughs> my, my clip. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is line up the video with the audio and just make sure that they are lined up perfectly because my video I recorded separately, sep separately, separately from my audio, um, and it, like I said, it was a, it's kind of like a lip sync, so I have to line up my fingers like what I see in the video with what I hear in the audio. So this might take a little bit of time. This does take some Premiere Pro knowledge. Before I used Premiere Pro, I did use DaVinci Resolve, which is free. So that's a good software to use. That is also pretty user-friendly, not too hard to learn how to do. So whatever I do here is gonna be exclusive to like the controls and panels and docs and whatnot in Adobe Premiere Pro. So first I'm gonna take the clarinet video and make it smaller because there is no reason it needs to be that zoomed in. It, it normally is like that, but it's fine. And then I'm gonna just kind of position it how I want to. For my YouTube videos, which are rectangular, I will typically just have, um, there is no sound with this clip. Um, <laughs> thank you for guessing us up, Mano. Uh, and I'm gonna, I don't know, I, I'll keep it, it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna shift that over so it's centered and I'm just gonna play it and just see what it looks like for right now. Um, um, I'm going to shrink this just a little bit, double check. That's literally editing. You just watch the same thing over and over again and then decide whether you like it or not. <laughs> I don't really know what rendering does. Don't ask me. I'm not a geek of like the computer stuff. I just like know I have to do it. <laughs> 
Um, but I'm sure it like polishes the file. So it's like, yeah, now we're ready to export it. Like, I feel like that's the layman's terms of it. Uh, if I had to like give it a description, um, can we get it on the full quality though? Maybe because I don't have too much done to these. I'm going to, so to change the quality, just, so here we go. Okay. Full quality. I wish I could show you a full screen, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Tilde? Like shift tilde. Oh, oh, here's the finished product, guys. You get the idea for the most part. Hey, we're learning from each other. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, so this is editing Cassie just to say thank you so much for watching my clarinet content demonstration process and how I produce clarinet videos. This I can already tell you um, my process has already <laughs> changed a little bit slightly since I filmed this uh, this YouTube video, um, as do most processes as things evolve and people improve skills. So this is a skill I'm still continuing to work on. Sorry if any of my editing is kind of botched, but I am doing this for fun. Um I also did this to be educational for anyone that does want to get into the content creation for their craft, for their, in, their instrument, and wants to create videos kind of like mine or somewhat similar to mine. I would love to know if anyone that watched this video is planning to create their own content. Please comment below if any part of this video is helpful. As I did lightly mention in the video, this is basically like a lip sync quote unquote video. Most musicians that have pre-recorded videos that they post on their platforms are basically like lip sync. They record the audio first because sometimes their audio equipment is in a different space than where they can record like a nice, nice well-lit area for their video portion of their videos just because some people they have preferences for how the audio quality is and how the video quality is and sometimes those two things are in the same space. I will say probably like 75 to 85 percent of the videos you see. Sorry to ruin the magic for some of you. I don't know if anyone who typically enjoys my videos watch this video fully but if you did make it to the end of this video I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this whole thing um if you could please like and comment on this video subscribe to my channel if you're interested in staying up to date with my content hit that bell if you want to get notifications happy time zone um and yeah bye